My name's Aisha Chatterjee and I'm going to be reading a few poems for you over the next 10 minutes at the invitation of um, Poetry London. And I'd just like to start off by saying a huge big thank you to David and everybody at um, Poetry London for inviting me to be a part of this video reading series. Um, I've never really done anything like this before and I've certainly never recorded myself visually so I, I hope I'm not too much of a disaster and I really hope you enjoy um, uh, the, the poems that I read. Um, <clears throat> we've just been through uh, a polar vortex over the last few days and even though it's May we've had snow and hail and uh, below freezing temperatures and we're just about getting out of that and getting back into spring uh, which I for one am very grateful for. Um, and so I thought I would start out by reading a poem that I wrote many years ago when we still lived in Germany and it's called April, but it still is, it, it still works I think for the way the weather and nature is in, um, in Toronto at the moment. So this is April. In the early April breeze, light and full of the scent of birth, carrying its little parcels of seeds that by June will turn into a wealth of rubies, emeralds, aquamarines. There often is an underlying chill, as though the earth were unsure still, wondering if perhaps it erred, perhaps, in fact, a little preferred the ease of dearth. So, um, the next poem I'd like to read was written in Germany when I was sitting by my window, as I think a lot of people around the globe do a lot of these days. Um, and I, I was sitting at my desk and I heard this click, click, clop of hooves. And uh, when I looked out, I saw a horse-drawn carriage with a couple that was clearly on their way to church to be married. And so this is Peripheries. Below my window, two white horses pull an ivory universe, newly created and fragile, making their beribboned way to the church. Like snails, they leave a glistening trail in their wake in the April sun. All down the street, a multitude of worlds for a moment overlap, then spin away, and individual histories shift their gaze to other more important chores. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but um, there's a freight train that's just passing through um, and it's very possible that the video is shaking because our entire house shakes every time that happens. It's almost the only sound I hear um, and I kind of wait for it sometimes. It's almost like a companion or something. Um, anyway, that's just an aside. Um, so Anyway, from uh, a window in uh, Dusseldorf to um, another window in, in Toronto. Um, and this was after we had uh, moved to, to Toronto in 2010. And uh, there I was, sitting by a window again, gazing out. Um, and I was looking, you know, out, out, out of my window at... Uh, it was it, uh, at, a, at a, well, it was a park. Um, and I was just thinking about how you associate specific sounds with specific images because you know they go together. But if you take those sounds away and replace them with other sounds because you can't actually hear what is actually happening, what happens then? Um, so this is called projection. Beside a dry canoe perched like a red dolly moustache on the plateau, a black dog whirs in the ziggurat grass, a rhythmic, cyclical sound. He races down the brown slope to the pathway, across to the emerald field and a stick figure. Ah, that's what the humming in the background was. Another bigger dog bounces in from right field, clicking. Two Canada geese fly by. It must be spring. So those were um, from my collection, 
the clarity of distance. Um, and I'm now going to read uh, from my second collection, which is Bottles and Bones. Uh, and uh, the title of the poem I'm about to read is actually, was actually uh, suggested to me by a fellow poet at a writing course in England run by the Arvon Foundation. And it, it's such a charming uh, uh, title. It's uh, apparently um, the way Turkish folk tales and fairy tales are started, uh, kind of like the equivalent of Once Upon a Time. So this is Once There Was and Then There Wasn't. I dreaded the car door closing. What if I never saw you again? Friday nights were bird's eye. I thought all the fish were long and clean edged like fingers. The first day of spring was smeared and hung and completely wordless. America switched on at night. Sometimes the tapes tangled irrevocably. My mother remembers the lamp lighters. If I tried hard enough, I could make her memories mine. I was as tall as the daffodils, and then I wasn't. So um, from one set of daffodils to the next set, um, this next poem was published uh, in CV2. Um, and it is really about, um, it's called Temptation, and it's about uh, the flowers that are known as Narcissus Poeticus, and how could a poet not write about those flowers? So this is Temptation. It draws out splinters when mixed with honey. Bright as a bird, it pins you down all the way across spring, the same yellow eye rearing dreamlike at your ankles, shrinking a room, making you rich. So, and I've got one last poem for you, which is, um, which is um, pretty much just published, and I'm really excited about it. I got it in uh, the, the mail a couple of days ago, and it uh, was published in um, Guest Journal. Um, so a huge big thank you to Rob McLennan and um, Natalie Hanna for publishing this with a lot of really uh, strong poems. So I'm, I'm very honored to be one of them. Um, and this is called Disassociation. I am making a movie in which I play myself. In one scene, I walk through streets with massive, brutish buildings, bearded and icicles, the walls pockmarked with protrusions, each one grotesque as a furuncle from a prehistoric disease. Mostly, I am wearing an emerald sari, thick silk with silver brocade, completely unsuitable. The difficulty lies in staying in character. I say such things as, what a hinky situation, which I'd never do, and then I hate myself. I'll have to cut those scenes. Also the ones with the sari. Then there's her voice, so much like mine that I taste salt, which may or may not be shared blood or tropical sweat or merely an ordinary chemical reaction. Becoming her requires abstinence and Fervent belief. Breathe into her, they say, to make her animate. All that footage, I shall have to prune it down and prune it down to change her fortune, as God might, to make her more like me. Thank you. Stay safe.